Good morning, East End. It's so good to be here on the third week of Advent. My name is Joanna Cummings, and I'm one of the pastors here. We're thrilled to welcome you to worship, and I want us to remember who we are as a community of faith as we come together. Uh, I invite you to take a look at the front of your bulletin and to read the who we are as a community of faith statement. And let's read that together today. It's been a couple weeks since we've done that. Please read with me. We believe that Jesus' message of unconditional love means that every human being is a child of God and is worthy of love, respect, and inclusion. Expression, race, ethnicity, age, faith, and status. We speak with all people through love together as we remember who we are called to be as a community of faith. I have a few announcements for you that are important as we enter into this third week of Advent. Remember that our, outre our outreach committee is doing a detergent drive uh, both today, all this week, and up into Christmas Eve. So detergent will be taken up and uh, can be brought over to the parsonage, any kind of detergent for that. Okay, laundry detergent. Our Just Food group is meeting today at noon at Tatuma. We have a beautiful lessons and carol service planned for today at 6 o'clock p.m. at Scarlet Bennett on together and planning and, and rehearsing, and um, we are so thrilled to be together and to do that. And then our Christmas Eve services, I can't believe we're a week away. Christmas Eve, we want you to know that there will be no more early morning service like we're meeting today in Stable Church. So all together, 2.30 p.m., just one service that day. So we're all gonna come on together and, and scoot in nice and close as neighbors, family, to join us for that time. And finally, we want to remind you to submit your end of year gifts and close out 2023 giving by and postmarked no later than December 31st. Any year end giving related to stocks needs to be submitted to our broker as soon as possible by her office email address at office at eastnumc.org. We are grateful for your generous giving and all of the ways that each of you help make this community come together and work and function so that we can be the body of Christ out into the world. And with that, let us begin this time of worship together.
you are. Good morning. And greetings, favored ones. God is with you. Our soul is the Holy One. And our spirit rejoices in God our Savior. You have found favor with God. You shall conceive in your hearts and bear God's love into the world. Continue to remain as you are and join in singing our opening hymn, To a Maid Engaged to Joseph, which is printed in the insert found with your bulletin. to Christmas. But our attention to the holiday sits alongside our attention and our recognition of sin within our own lives and in the world around us. So let us turn ourselves to our God of the prophets. We cry out to you at the injustice of the world. We cry out because young ones are killed by bombs and bullets. We cry out because people continue to choose violence and claim it in your name. We cry out because illness and pain have touched our loved ones and are only sleeping in their cars and on the streets. We cry out because people cannot get the treatment necessary for their illness. We want to sing Mary's song, but all that escapes our lips is a whimper, a sob, a sigh too deep for words, a roaring rage of tears. Help us, O oh God, to be the menders and healers this world desperately needs. Help us join in the work of reparation and restoration.
Like Mary, you are beloved and highly favored. Glory to God. Amen. And now, as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us greet one another by extending the peace of Christ to those around you. The peace of Christ be with you. and give birth to the Messiah. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? And yet, only a few months later, Mary sings to Elizabeth, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. The for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name, making God's dreams from our salvation and flourishing a reality. And we question, how can this be? I am only, yet, like Mary, the onlys that make, the, that make us hesitate as God loves, trans tra encounter divine love, cool love and peace. Deep hope are just peace and our fierce joy. May love grow with our lives. Amen.
Christmas, we get this time where we break out a little bit of the pink as a sign of our joyousness and to baptize a child and also welcome new members into this wonderful family of Christ. So this is the Hughes family. And we're going to do a couple things today. We're going to baptize Jonathan, and then we're going to welcome the whole family into membership here today. My siblings in Christ. My siblings in Christ. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated. This is God's gift offered to us without price. Gordon and Nicole, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. And Gordon and Nicole, will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself. And now I ask the entire congregation here at East End UMC, so you'll want your insert. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. Amen. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life? and include these prayers, and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child Christian faith, as many generations have done before us, do you believe in God, our divine parent, creator of heaven and earth? I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, rose again, sent into the heaven, and will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And you. You swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow, and when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of his disciples, to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Alright. And what name is given this child? Alright. Jonathan Blackstone Hughes, I baptize you in the name of God, our Creator, of Christ, our Sustainer, and our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Amen. <laughs> now, if we can all place our hands on him, and I'll let Carrie get back around here, too. All right, you ready? You, that having been born by water and the Spirit, you may grow to be a true disciple who walks in a way that leads to life. Amen. Amen. You do know that that's what Jesus did when he was baptized by John. Right? <laughs> Baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation. 
and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one part of Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Now, having welcomed our new little brother in Christ, we have the honor of welcoming this entire family into membership at East End United Methodist Church as well. So I have a couple questions for Gordon and Nicole here. Church, and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries. If so, say, I will. And as members of this congregation, East End United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you, the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant to participate faithfully in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified. Strengthen you that you may live in grace and peace. And now, having baptized Jonathan and welcomed the Hughes family into membership, I think Jonathan is very excited to come and see you all while we sing the traditional baptismal song. Um, I also invite you to greet the Hughes family at the back of the, the auditorium as soon as our service ends today. And then as we are finishing up the baptismal song, that will be the time where children ages 4 to 4th grade are invited to meet their leaders in the back to go to Children's Church. So, let us sing to
Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 1, as found in the Revised Standard Version, updated edition. Listen with me for the word of God. was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no virgin. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be, to be born will be holy. He will be called, saved a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Uh, let's just all be clear. We are loving the joyful noise over here um, and all around. And uh, I just have so many joyful children moments in my pocket as a gift that I have to return <laughs> to the children's <laughs> ministry from Micah. And it just got me started on a day that I was running late. So uh, I just want to begin by being grateful for these joyful moments that seem small but can really change. And as we, in our tradition, are reading it, it signals to me that we are getting even closer to Christmas, whether or not I'm ready, but we are. And it answers an important question asked on the Christmas radio rotation by various Did you know? <laughs> Mary did indeed know. <laughs> Mary did know, she, and she knew enough anyway. There was a messenger from God who explained to her the plan. And, and it appears that she felt it was from a credible source. So I want to give some credit to her. Uh, but it's a matter of whether or not we drown it out and that we are prepared to hear the voice of the Spirit when it calls. And I think that Mary must have felt in her spirit that this encounter was good. She did her homework, and she asked the messenger a super important question. How? How can this be? How is this possible? And then I think that Mary counted the cost and what was at stake to saying yes, was her own well-being as an unmarried woman. She knew that her family's reputation was on the line. She knew this would affect her. And if that was the case, uh, so would the quality of her life going forward. It would be in jeopardy. As a woman in the ancient Middle East, her options were incredibly limited. And yet, she entertained the impossible. How could this happen to me? I'm just a young woman, 12, 13, maybe 14, as was the custom of the day. And as the mother of a 12-year-old, I would have some strong words for this messenger. <laughs> in regards to young women here in these United States. Um, but to be fair, I do think we need to give young people more credit as a parent and as the youth pastor here. I have to give credit where credit is due. So I'm noticing I am just going to brag on our youth for a little bit. Young people are often given a, a bad name, but the ones that I encounter are bright, creative, compassionate, 
and they boldly try new things. That I think that's right. Piano, the trombone, the clarinet, the cello, or maybe just having a speaking part in front of their whole school. This takes courage. Courage that some of us lay aside when we set out into more week to raise funds for Family Battle Day Home and check in on some of our at-home members at East End. And they were also so <coughs> gentle and kind, especially with the small children we encountered on our musical way. Singing in front of others is another thing for many of us, not all of us, <laughs> takes more courage. And that's just what they did. And I would say that our young people are capable of so much. And I love that we, as their community of faith, as we were reminded of as we just did our baptismal vows, that we have a chance to walk alongside them. Suddenly had a lot on her shoulders when she was counting the cost. Mary knew that what was at stake was more than just her. She saw the suffering of people living under Roman occupation, and that was a constant shadow. There were taxes, abuse by Roman soldiers, there was instability. That this child could come and make right all that felt wrong. She heard the promise of who this child would be. He will be great and called the son of the Most High. Will reign forever and his kingdom will not have an end. This is the message that was delivered by the bird an announcement that all the world will be back in its right place. And when she heard a forever reign of God's kingdom, she heard stability in, in a time of instability. With the history of exile and diaspora, I imagine when she heard those words, that hope was born anew in her heart. That would restore God's good kingdom. So yes, Mary, Mary certainly did know. She understood the hope of this child, the peace this child could bring to this long-suffering community, and her carrying her very own miracle, impossible child. And their meeting confirming this mystery as John the Baptist leapt for joy in Elizabeth's womb upon their greeting. And Mary also found refuge and solidarity with Elizabeth as they both walked the path of preparing for a child. There was joy because Mary did know, you might get tired of that, <laughs> and she did understand. Later in the scripture is Mary's song of joy, also known as the Magnificat. And some of these words include, God has shown strength by scattering the proud, has brought down the powerful and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and has made the world to its original design. A world where there is equity, where the lowly are not loved, where people walk in humility and there's enough to eat, and where the rich do not receive extra breaks or special benefits because there is enough. There is no breaks. And Mary also sings of God coming to the aid of Israel and God's mercy. A powerful statement in a moment that she was living in when Israel was now in our wanderings through the wilderness through Exodus that God had shown much mercy through the people of Israel in their wandering and their attempt at a theocracy in the kingdom of God. God showed mercy because they, like all of us humans, made some mistakes along the way. This part of the Mithicat really struck me this year, particularly with Israel and Palestine and the debates on who needs aid and whether or not people are willing to separate Mary's words, I think there are some questions that we can ask of our current moment. Power. Whose movement is restricted? Whose food and water supplies are being shut off? 
Who has received mercy? Who is in need of mercy today? What needs to be put right? What about God's design of equity and abundance and liberation? Our United Methodist stance is that war reminded of efforts of all people in all countries that pursue peace through law and endorse international aid and cooperation in all matters of need and everyone involved. We all need liberation. No Jew should have to fear for their lives, and still they do. No Palestinian should have to call a war zone a home. Mary knew generations ago that the world needed Jesus and deemed it worth the risk. Mary's yes was so this sounds great, but well, Jesus' ministry on earth brought the kingdom near. It was not the kingdom that was most anticipated. That Jesus chose. Instead, he chose all boundaries. It's not that includes people, including people. It requires those members to enact the kingdom, to live out the kingdom. Especially with those on the margins. It's that more some of us. This kingdom, this beloved community, is and is also becoming. It requires action. Martin, say something. You must do. Sounds like a lot of uncomfortable work. And MLK also said the arc of the moral universe is our timeline for peace on earth. It is the good soul work of God and God's people working together. Timeline. <laughs> But I'm sure Mary saw Jesus creating community of loving the unlovable, of loving enemies, of breaking boundaries. I'm sure Mary experienced many things, but also immense joy in the relationships made as people began to follow Jesus. And joy alongside people who experienced the liberation from the barrier because it resisted the ways of the Roman Empire even resisted some of the religious gatekeepers. Joy is resistance. Joy is fuel of a resilience, and joy surprises us. I believe that joy, I like that we're lighting the joy candle this week, when Thursday will be the longest night of this year. This time of year where we celebrate can be a difficult time for us, or people that are just not feeling the spirit. We don't have to pretend happy, shiny people are not required. <coughs> and I want to invite everyone to the both Glendale United Methodist Church and West End United Methodist Church are having Blue Christmas Longest Night services. So if you feel that you're not feeling the spirit and need a place to go, I'm going to be at one of those myself. <laughs> um, it's a chance and a space to acknowledge that all of our thoughts and feelings that happen during this season. The season can be hard, and it's important for us to hold it all in tension. The anticipation of a child born in 2023. Hope can appear of our dark moments. Much like Mary's encounter, where she heard a message that gave her hope for future <coughs> generations, she accepted this joy that, we that is with us, and it might surprise us. Whatever you are holding, or whatever the season holds for you, knowing that God and we thank you, Carrie, for welcoming us, welcoming us into a space of joy and the tension that that joy sometimes has with other things going on in the world and our lives. And that brings us to our time of prayer, where now is the time to do that. Helen, I know that Naomi's got one back there. I 
I'd like to ask all of you to do two things. I built in with her son at ICU. He was admitted on Thursday, Sean. And Sean is about, I guess he's 36 or 37 years old. And he's had a lot of health problems and it's been a tough two or three days. So I want you, first of all, I'd like to ask you to pray for Sean. Lunch. Thank you, Naomi. All of us will be praying for Sean and Debbie and their family. Other prayer concerns? Yeah. More joys. Good morning. <laughs> um, so those of you who know Janet and I um, might have noticed that we have not been at church in the last couple of months. And there's a reason for that. You who would need um, adoptive parents. And my cousin was his foster mom, and Jen has been living in Indiana since the end of October when he was released from the NICU. Um, and I've been trying to petition the court to allow Jen and I to bring um, our son home um, at the end of this month. Um, he'll still be like a foster placement for the time being, but the plan is that we will be able to adopt him in June, is like the end date. So, um, and I wanted to thank um, all of our pastors and um, the foster and adoption group for all of the support during this like time. Um, and we're going to be traveling home together as a family on December 27th. So we're... Great, great nephew who is in... Has been receiving care in Oklahoma City and now in the long term mm -hmm. needs our prayers. We will pray for them. Helen, I think we have one two. Oh, two up here. Kelly Francis and then Victoria. Week. Um, and it's to relieve persistent pain that he's had for a couple of years now. And we are just hopeful that the surgery did and prayers for those caring for him because he is grumpy when he is in pain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, prayers for your father. I also wanted to ask for prayers for, for my father. Um, uh, this time last year, he and my sister and brother-in-law and their little son that they joined in our choir for Christmas Eve service. And, and that's our, our has been our hope and our plan for this year as well. But my dad's been having some issues with a, a wire inside his chest that's supposed to stabilize his chest since his heart surgery. And it seems like things have gotten worse. And so I'm not sure whether that's going to happen or not at this point. Someone to be available. Um, so we're hoping for some more this week on what could be done. And so just prayers for him and also prayers for my sister who is in the sandwich, the middle-aged sandwich, between taking care of my dad and also taking care of her four-year-old son who's now um, diagnosed with autism. So um, just lots of prayers in, in that direction for that part of my family. Thank you. Thank you. Is that Jess hiding over there? Um, I just have a joy. So uh, Nick, my partner, has been working really hard on getting into physician's assistant school, and it's been really, really a long journey, and he got in, and he just to say it to anybody. So I'm just going to say it to everyone, because we're very, very, very excited and happy for him. That's good news. I asked last week, and there still wasn't news, so I should ask more often things like that. Anyone else? All right, well, let us go to God in prayer. Good and gracious God, we have heard through Carrie's beautiful sermon of today, and yet also that your joy, your hope, and your love can indeed bubble up. Lord, we lift up all of those persons that have been mentioned here today that need our extra prayers. We pray that they find your presence and your comfort and your guidance are difficult to face hardship and sickness and illness. Lord, we also lift up as well. We give thanks to be able to celebrate in all sorts of ways. Know that life is always a delicate balance between joy and so good. But Lord, you hold us. Gathered in your spirit and gathered in spirit with those who be with this world as it hurts. 
as we continue to prepare our hearts and minds to welcome your presence with us. And as we pray all these things, God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To invite our ushers forward. This is the time when we have the opportunity to offer all of our gifts in, to God's work in this community and in our world. All that we have and all that we are and all that we have to offer to build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. It is in your holy name that we pray. Amen.
is an abiding joy, and it comes from God. Isaac, if you were on the church retreat, so sing out loud. Um, it is a protest song. It has a long history. I found it with the Resistance Revival Course, a group of all kinds of women who started together along the time of the 2020 Women's March and the Black Lives Matter March. And it's just a reminder that this joy that we have Please carry that joy with you as you go, and now let us sing it together. Mm -hmm. 